Someone offers you $100 per hour to watch any movie on repeat, which movie do you choose? The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King Extended Cut The longest possible film is probably the default meta choice. Woodstock documentary is 5.5 hours long and it's mostly all music you can dance to. If I'm going to watch something over and over I'm going to want to get jiggy with it. I cannot believe I had to scroll this far to find this. It's $100 per hour, a single showing of the extended cut could just about cover my rent contribution. If I did two viewings once a month while still maintaining my day job, I could potentially decimate my boyfriend's student debt within a year while still indulging in my admittedly expensive hobby of smelling very interesting and sometimes quite nice. Edit, I'm not an English major. Primer. I doubt I'd have it figured out after 20 hours so that's 2 grams right there. As soon as I finished watching that I spent like an hour reading flowcharts and synopsis on what happened I'm still confused. I had a somewhat opposite experience. I saw the movie and left thinking, wow that's so clever, I can't believe X made Y happen, and no one saw Z coming. I saw a flowchart a little later, and it was more like. Event X12 from Timeline 4 creates Paradox Y4 when version 3 of Character 1 goes back to Timeline 3 and creates Event Z53 that begins Timeline 5. Realized I'm too much of an idiot to even realize how much I missed. Lol I'm in this comment and I'm okay with it. That was a fun movie, going to have to re-watch it soon, and since I'm also dumb probably draw the same conclusions I did previously. My movie. Web link. I love how Gimli and Legolas stay together for the entire series of films. Not only for the movies. They visited Fangorn Forest and the Shiny Cavern, can't remember the name, on the way home. One twenty-ish years later, they sailed west together, making Gimli the only dwarf to ever go to Valinor. Edit, words. I felt like I was following the story until suddenly I couldn't anymore and I just spent the rest of the movie confused. It's like being in a math lecture where you stop understanding something and then everything builds off that, and you start getting nervous and a little bit angry and then the back of your neck starts getting itchy. In grad school, my housemate and I were both in STEM programs, so we were very much engaged with the puzzle aspect of the movie. During one of our viewings we invited another of our housemates who was in a SLP program specializing in young children. Watching Primer with her was eye-opening. She didn't care about any of the time travel puzzle aspects but alerted us to all the emotional motivations of the characters. It made me appreciate both the movie and my SLP roommate a lot more. Something in Spanish with subtitles so I can become bilingual and understand my Spanish-speaking patients without a translator and get paid for the engaging activity. That reminds me of the Zach Galifianakis quote, I want to learn Spanish so that I can watch the Spanish channel and figure out what I've been laughing at for all these years. Big brain moves over here. One I hate it, because not matter what movie it is I'll end up hating it anyway. For $100 an hour I'll watch any stupid movie. I wouldn't want to watch scary movies though. Honestly, a scary movie might not be that bad. Horror movies get a lot of their horror from the unknown, so once you've seen everything that'll happen two to three times you can just focus on all the little mistakes that most people wouldn't catch on their first viewing. Also, a lot of scary movies have terrible writing, which could become a humorous thing to focus on in a the room sort of way. Speaking of the room I imagine it could qualify as psychological horror if someone was forced to watch it on repeat for a few days while in isolation. Imagine watching it so much that you become conditioned into seeing Tommy Wiseau as normal human behavior. Throw in the ridiculous amount of money you earn by watching it so much and you've basically found a way to turn people into Tommy. Okay, so I actually have some context for this. My friend and I got really into the room, and bad movies in general, in college. We were always up for a challenge and, one year, we decided to watch the room once a day and just see how long we could go in a year. We had certain rules, you could skip a day but you had to watch it twice the next day, you could listen to the audio in the car but you had to finish the movie visually at some point, etc. I made it 38 days. He made it 42. It became a nightmare. You memorize it really fast and, by day 10, begin responding to the characters. Two weeks in and it was my dream every night. 
It was literally ruining my life because I knew, at some point, I was watching the room that day. And, once I was done, I dreaded the next day because it meant the room. My friend fell almost a week behind and slammed it six times in a row. It was brutal. Edit who would have thought that one of the dumbest times in my life would lead to one of my most upvoted comments, well, never mind, that seems to be how it works. I'm happy my dumb follies have brought you all joy. Watching that movie six times in a row is a level of masochism Lars von Trier could only dream of. Oh hi Mark. When I was 14, I watched Titanic three times in a day. Easy money. I read this at first as you watching Titanic 3 edit, well, my first silver or better. Thanks, I guess. That damn ship won't stop sinking. Starring Samuel L. Jackson. Hold on to your boats. There's a new iceberg in town. That's it. I'm sick of all these mother icebergs in this mother ocean. I watched Pirates of the Caribbean. The Curse of the Black Pearl four times each day during summer break. Ten years later I can still say every single line from the movie. I'll pay pal five dollars if you do it again. I do it for free. Darnell's a chump, I'd do it for anything. I've done a lot more for a lot less. Your first experience with Leo? Or was it boobs? I'd wear my Leonardo DiCaprio shirt while watching on repeat. My brother joined me too. Parents thought he was there for Kate, but nah, he was there for Leo too. When I worked at Walmart in electronics that was basically my job, watch Finding Nemo for 8 hours a day on loop, or whatever comparable kids movie had recently come out, and I got a hell of a lot less than $100 slash hour for it. We had Mega Mind on repeat with one of the Samsung displays I think. Tangled and then eventually Wreck-It Ralph. They might be good movies, but it really does make you angry stuck listening to them 8 hours a day. When your friends say they want to watch a movie, and you roll your eyes because you know whatever they choose, you've seen it a million times. Lol I worked at a computer store in the 90s and my boss wanted to play Aladdin on repeat for the new game, I tell you I loved that movie before that job, never watched it again until just a couple months ago. I love the disc intro where Dory keeps rambling on about being a star. Fill my trailer with water. Lol. I say it all the time and no one knows what I'm talking about. I worked in a cinema when I was younger. During shifts where I was the one tearing tickets I'd just go in and watch the movie as they start at more or less the same time. Two screens on the first floor and four screens on the third floor. Ground floor screens were always the team leader's duty. So if I got first floor, the easiest job in the whole cinema, I'd watch the same movie like three times a shift. probably hot fuzz so I can just keep spotting details each time. I was going to say Shaun of the Dead for the same reason. Scott Pilgrim for me. So Edgar Wright in general. Correct. Same goes for Baby Driver and The World's End. I'm convinced that The World's End will be my favorite movie like 20 years from now when I've exhausted my ability to rewatch the others and then I put on The World's End and it's a relatively fresh Edgar Wright movie. I didn't dislike it by any stretch, but anytime I want to watch an Edgar Wright movie, it's usually a toss-up between any of the others, with a tilt to hot fuzz. No luck watching them movies then. It's for the greater good. The greater good. Hag. Groundhog Day. A loop within a loop, I think I'd go crazy. Watching it twice a day. From Monday to Thursday, 208 days a year, so that's 416 by 141, length of the movie, equals 692 hours of Groundhog Day. That's 69k a year. That really doesn't sound too bad. 3 day weekend, less than 4 hours of work a day. I could live with that. Also as long as you're averaging 8 viewing slash week you should be golden meaning you could smash out the whole lot in 2 days then take the rest of the week off. A sweet opportunity to travel as you'll be able to work anywhere and have tons of free time. Google Glass, a giant battery pack, and you could let it run all throughout your day, live your life like, relative, normal, and get paid. 
It's effin' big brain time. Nice. I've, in the past, tried to convince my wife that we should have our friends over for a Groundhog Day marathon but I was outvoted one to one. I laughed way too hard this. As a married man, I understand that vote count. Or Palm Springs if you want a modern twist. That movie was excellent, but sadder than I expected. For $100 per hour? Any movie, are you kidding? That's not enough money to get me to watch Cats. Edit, the number of times the word butthole has showed up in my replies is too damn high. So here's me, YouTube link. Depends on if it's the butthole edit or not. Release the butthole cut. Wait, they show buttholes in cats? In case you're seriously looking for information on this meme, basically the legend goes that for the cats movie they originally had CGI buttholes on all the cats. Then they decided that that, that, was just too much, so they paid someone to redo all the CGI and remove the buttholes. According to the tale the studio still has the original cut, aka the butthole cut, and people are demanding they release it. No, because they were cut. Ouch, wouldn't that just create a bigger hole? What if you watch the version with the buttholes edited in? Edit, please don't make my most upvoted comment about anthropomorphic cat's buttholes. Web link. I'm not going to watch that as I click the link. Totally worth it. How do I unsee a YouTube video? But what if they supplied weed? Would that make it okay? I might be able to handle it then for one or two viewings. But I don't know how many times I could watch it, sober or stoned, before it started to affect my sanity. You only have to watch not listen so just mute it and start making up stories instead of listening to whatever crap they say on screen. Is that how bad lip reading got started? Any Reddit question involving doing something for money is almost always written by a teenager that has zero concept of money. I'd sit through any movie for minimum wage, let alone $100 slash hour. Such a dumb effing question. Would you sit in wet pants for two hours for a measly sum of $50 million? I would sit in anyone's wet pants for that amount. No questions asked. The old joke after the female gorilla dies, the male gorilla becomes increasingly violent due to his sexual frustration, so the zookeeper asks the janitor if he'd have sex with the gorilla for $1,000. And the janitor says, hell yes, but you're going to need to give me a week to come up with the money. The possibly even older joke a man applies to a zoo for work and is told that one of their gorillas recently died and that they were having a real hard time getting a new one. He was asked if he could wear a gorilla costume and pretend to be a gorilla. He agreed and was told he would have to keep this very secret, because if anyone found out, the zoo would be ridiculed and forced to close. He was fine at first, but after a few weeks he started getting really bored pretending to be a gorilla all day. He started having fun by climbing the trees and other parts of the exhibit. One day he was climbing on a branch that hung over the wall to the tiger exhibit and he slipped. As he was dangling there he began to yell for help, which gained the interest of one of the tigers who started coming closer. He quickly lost hold of the branch and fell down into the tiger enclosure. As he jumped up he began to yell help, help. As he ran away, but was soon tackled by a tiger who held him down and whispered urgently into his ear, will you shut the hell up, we're going to get caught. Fun fact, this, or variants of it, is actually a classic joke from Reikugo, a form of traditional Japanese comedic storytelling. $100 per hour is more than I make right now as a tech telecommuter, even considering taxes. I would absolutely watch one crafty movie again and again for 8 hours per day, 5 days per week, 52 weeks per year for $100 per hour. For minimum wage it wouldn't be worth my time though. I guess it also depends on what kind of enforcement this involves to make sure you're actually watching. If you have to actively pay attention, can't look at your phone or read a book or something, I imagine it could almost turn into a form of torture after long enough. And then you could just quit and swim away in your money. And because they've never dealt with a problem that was worse than watching a bad movie. Would you take a job as an orderly in a rural care center for extremely mentally disabled seniors, cleaning their diapers and beds while being verbally abused, for $9 slash H? 
What about $10 per hour if you agree to night shift? Oh, and the Alzheimer's patients will hit you. Hard as F. Watch out for Jim. Is he violent? No, the sun's out. He's just a butthole. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.